Okay, students, we're in Fusion 360 now, and this is the first one I'm going to go through. And this was the design that used the loft feature. So you can see I've got the basic shape there that would make our lamp. So this is what we're going to make, but I'm going to start a new design. Now, the first thing we want to do in our new design is create that bottom sketch there. So that's all we're going to do first. So to do that, I'm just going to go sketch, create sketch, and it needs to know which plane. So these are the planes and remember that because we're going to make some new planes later. So I'm just going to select that plane there. And that was just a simple rectangle shape. So I'm just going to start there. And I know, just because I've already made one of these lamps, so that's 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters. Hit enter. Uh, and I can hit stop sketch up there. And easy as that, we've got our first sketch there. Now, the second one we're going to do is a little bit bigger. And it's going to be in the middle. But what we don't have yet in this design is one of those planes that I pointed out before up here in the middle so that I can create that next sketch. So to do that, we go into construct and there's lots of different ways to make more planes, but I'm just gonna pick the first one because if you can look at the picture, you can see if it's just an offset plane. So I, I pick which plane I want, which is this one, and I say I want to offset this new work plane above that. So I'm just gonna pick 70 millimeters. because that's in the middle and I know that this lamp is 140 millimeters high. Okay, you can see this next rectangle is going to be a little bit bigger. So let's get into that. So again, we just go create sketch. I want my new one. And the great thing is, I can still see the first one I did. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go rectangle again, just the first one. And I'm not going to put any dimensions. I'm just going to draw it out like that, make sure it's bigger. And now I'm going to say how far apart I want it or how much bigger I want it than the previous one. So I'm going to go sketch dimension or I could just hit D on the keyboard and I'm going to put a dimension or a measurement between these two lines. And remember, it takes a couple of different clicks. So one click, two click, three clicks. And I know I'm going to want that 15 millimeters. You can do your own design. So remember, one click, two click, three click, 15 millimeters again and one click, two click, click out here in space, 15 millimeters, and final one, one click, two click, three click out there, 15. And all, I can hit stop sketch again, and just in a few minutes, we've already built up the first half of that lamp. Now, I need to repeat this first one, I need to repeat, um, I need to repeat up the top here because this is a symmetrical shape. But first, I need to put another work plane, like I put a work plane here. I need to put another one up the top there. So we know how to do that. It was just construct offset plane. And I'll hit that one there. And we know it's 70 millimeters up. Great, I've got my 70 millimeters. And I'm just going to create a new sketch again create sketch, hit our new work plane. And just like before, this is really good that I can work off the information that I've already done. So I'm just gonna go rectangle, choose the first one. And I don't have to put any dimensions in. I'm just gonna grab this corner, drag it out, this corner. And I know it's the exact size that we want. And there we go. So now we have our three sketches, one, two, three, which are going to make up our loft. So there's our loft feature there. That's how we're going to build this shape. So we're done with sketching. Now we're moving on to the creation side and I'm going to choose that loft feature. And as you can see from the preview window, it's creating uh, a 3D profile from two different shapes. So, or here in our case, we've got three. So it, want, it needs to know which shapes we want in our loft. So I'm going to choose one, two, and notice this one, because it used that information from the first one, I just need to click it twice. And three. How's that? That's pretty good. Lots of different features here. You can play around with them if you want, but I'm happy with this as a new body. So I'm going to click OK. Now, 
uh, let's just go back to the PowerPoint. To build our slice lamps, we're going to need it hollow in the middle. We're going to need to shell it out on the inside just to give some room, the light, to travel between the very different layers. So each one of these layers should be hollow in the middle. And you can should be able to see that there as well. So I'm just going to show you how to do that feature. And that is we've created our shape. Now we need to modify it. And we can see shell there. And if you look at the picture, it's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to say take our, our solid shape and hollow out the inside. So it needs to know what to keep. So I'm going to say keep that face um, open. I'm going to set my thickness. Now I know from experience with these slice lamps that 20 millimeters is perfect. And obviously we want to hollow out the inside. So I'm going to hit OK. And if I move there, it's, it, it might be a bit hard to see, but uh, that has shelled out the inside. At, at, in a uniform shape, now you can see it. So you can see it curves around with the profile. So that was um, that was the shell feature. So the three main ones I used there was the sketch for the rectangle, offset, offset plane to create our different planes, and then the loft feature, which was in create, to make our 3D body, and then just to shell it out at the at the end, I used the shell feature 20 mil thickness to get that shape in the middle. Okay, now we'll move on to creating this shape here. So before we use the loft, now we're going to use the revolve feature, which will, I'll just go back to the PowerPoint. So this is the one we've done already. Now, which keeps our corners. Now we're going to take this profile shape here and spin it 360 degrees in order to create that shape there. So that's the example I've got there. If you can see if I click there, you can see it's already hollowed out. Um, I'm gonna create um, a new shape here. And I just need one sketch this time. So I'm gonna go create sketch. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw just these three lines here. So sketch and now line, or you could just click L on your keyboard. So first one down the bottom, I know is 40 mils across. And I want my lamp to be 140, 140 millimeters high. And then I'm gonna do one more line, so I'll hit L. And I'll make that 25. Great. Okay, so I've got that basic shape there. See how it says 40 millimeters there? Go back to our PowerPoint. That's the 40 millimeters there. Because this spins in a circle, when it's finished, that base at the bottom of the lamp will be 80 millimeters. And just like this one, I set to 25. When I revolve that right around, that will be 50 millimeters across in diameter. So let's just go here. One last thing we need to do is put the curved arc in there. Now, there's my arc tool there. A couple of different options. Depending on what design you're trying to do, I could just do one arc like that, or I could put in a couple of different arcs to get a, more of an egg shape. So there's one, there's the other, and just, just make sure it's tangent. There you go. And I could even put a dimension between those two values if I really wanted to control it, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to hit stop sketch. Okay. Now we've done the sketching, now it's time for the creating and I'm going to find the revolve feature. Have a look at the picture. You can see um, it's taking a profile, spinning at 360 degrees. So it's asking for a profile. We know what the profile is. The second bit of information is axis. So axis just being the center point of a sphere or any circular shape. So, and I want this, because this is the, this line here is the, this line here is the center point of our lamp. So let's choose that as our axis. And there we go. We've got it um, straight away. 
Uh, if you're doing different kind of designs that don't need a three uh, a three hundred and sixty degree shape, you, you you can limit the shape. Um, but we do want three hundred and sixty uh, degrees. I'll just type it in here. So three hundred and sixty. Okay. Hit and I want a new body. Great. So there we go. I've created it already. Um, but just like on this design, we need to shell the middle because we need the light of the LEDs, which will be down the bottom, going in between each layer. If we don't hollow it, the light will stop at the at the first layer. So remember that was modify shell. So have a look at the image. It's just taking a shape and shelling it out. Um, and this time I might just click both. And we want that thickness just to be 20 millimeters on the inside. And now I've shelled out that shape. So if I click there, even though we can't see it, the, the inside of this shape is has been shelled out. Okay, so that is the loft feature and the revolve feature um, demonstrated. But we, so that's the Fusion 360 side of the design. Now we need to import it into Slicer for Fusion 360, because that will take our design, slice it, which will give the information that we need to build our lamp. Now, so you need to have already installed Slicer for Fusion 360, which is, it's uh, a separate uh, add-on to Fusion 360. So they work together, but it is a separate um, little app. And it's once you've installed it, if you go to the, actually, I might do the square one. Um, actually, let's choose this one here. Um, if you go to make, now usually we would go there for 3D printing, but now that I've installed it, I can see slicer for Fusion 360. So I click on that and it's going to say, hey, what actually do you want to slice? I'm gonna say it there. And I'm happy with medium on the resolution. And I hit OK, and it's going to think about this for a bit. Uh, importing the shape. And now I'll just make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. Yep, there we go. Okay, so here's our shape. It's still, it's still um, as it was when we left it. We need to tell... Um, Fusion 360, how we want to slice it. And there's many different ways. Um, we could go stacked slices, which are just slices on top of each other. Uh, not gonna help us with a lamp. We could do interlocking slices. Okay, looking a little bit better. But the one we're gonna use for our lamp is radial slices. So you can see radial slices there. And radial slices being um, these go around um, in a circle like that, pointing all to the middle. Okay, getting there, that's not too bad, but I know that if we will try to make this, there's many different slices, um, probably too many slices. So what I'm going to do, see on the first axis, it says there's 10 layers going uh, from top to bottom. From my experience making a lamp, let's just change that to eight. So you can see I clicked that down to eight, um, you, know, you can go down less if you want, but eight I find is um, a really good number when making uh, one of these lamps. Uh, on the same same idea, we can also reduce the number of these slices. Uh, so I'm going to take that down to five. I find five works really well for one of these lamps. As I keep doing this, you'll see these pages over here. Uh, that's each one of these is actually one of the slices and you can send either this information here to either a laser cutter or just a normal printer if you want to print it out in paper to cut it out on, uh, from our flute board. Okay, so I've got the number of slices I want, um, both um, this way and the stacks. Just a bit more information. It's currently in inches, so I'm going to change that to millimetres. Um, and I don't know why it does this. It always changes the height. So here it says 203, but if you remember, when we did it in Fusion, it was actually 140. So I'm gonna change that to 140 millimeters and hit enter. 
and all the rest will update as well. And you can see I've actually reduced how many pages this is going to print to just because it's, it's back to its proper size. Now, depending on what printer you're using, I'm using A4 paper. So I'm going to change the uh, paper to A4. And one last setting we need to do, if you hit manufacturing settings, it will give you the material size, which is really important. So I'm going to change that to millimeters. Now, this we don't, the height and width we don't change because that's our A4 piece of paper, but the thickness is really important. Uh, if I just, uh, we need to make sure, I've got mine set to 4.5, which is right for me because that's the thickness of my fluted board. But the offset, I'm going to change that to one millimeter, which just changes the offset um, in between the slots, which will mean our fluted board will go back together, uh, will assemble nicely. Um, it, that will depend on what kind of material that you're using. And the final thing we need to do is just to get plain. So I'm going to hit get plain. Um, and because I'll be printing this on a printer, just a normal 2D printer, I'm going to make PDF. And you can either export that to your computer or print that. Once we print that, we can cut that out to make up our lamp. Um, if you're using a laser cutter, you would have to export as DXF and the laser cutter will read that um, read that file. So just to sum everything up, um, we use both the revolve feature and the loft feature to build our shape. Once we were in Fusion 360 and had the shape we want, we went to make slicer for Fusion 360. In the software, I'll just get rid of this. Uh, we had to make sure that we had the right paper size. We had to make had to make sure we we're using radial slices as our construction technique. I'm recommending that we have eight layers stacked up with five radial slices at the top. Um, and under manufacturing settings, just make sure you have the right. Oops, sorry. You have the the right um, thickness and and slot thickness as well. There we go. So the right thickness for the board you're using and an appropriate offset to make sure that they all go together um, correctly. Okay, uh, enjoy making your um, slicer lamp in Fusion 360.